One daughter says her father killed up to 70 people, and she would know because she helped him bury them. But the other daughter says, uh, what? None of that's true. This is the story of Donald Studi, possibly the most prolific serial killer in American history, if he killed anyone at all. Hi friends, I'm Katie, and this is Katie Does Crime. Thank you for joining me for the first time if you're new here, and hello to the usual rapscallions and reprobates. Please consider subscribing or joining me on Patreon if you'd like to hear more true crime stories. Lucy Studi said she knew where her dad buried all of the bodies because she helped him bury them. Not just her, but her three sisters and brother, too. She said he was a serial killer who'd murdered masses of women in Thurman, Iowa. It's a town on the Nebraska border so remote that only 167 people called it home at the time of the last census. Really the perfect kind of place to live if you want to quietly bury scores of bodies over time without anyone knowing. 53-year-old Lucy says that when her dad said it was time to go to the well, they knew what that meant. It was time to move the corpses, either by wheelbarrow or sled, depending on the weather. As they threw the bodies into the well, covering them with dirt and lye to dampen the smell, Lucy wondered if she was next, if he wouldn't trust her one of these times to keep his secret. She estimates that her father killed between 50 and 70 people over the course of 30 years, making him one of the killingest serial killers ever in America. Lucy has been saying this for 45 years, but until last year, no one was listening. Donald Dean Studi was the kind of guy who had love and hate tattooed across the knuckles of his hands. It seems like he was a born criminal, always in trouble with guns or drugs or theft or gambling. Lucy said he had a short fuse and was often drunk. He spent time in jail for larceny and drunk driving, and the sheriff said they feared going to his trailer alone. Lucy was certainly fearful of him after the time he choked her almost to death in second grade, lifting her off the ground by the throat. There were always rumors around town about what was going on back there on the farm, and a neighbor remembers a strange call from Donald years ago where he asked if the guy had ever seen any cow or people bones in the well. Lucy says Donald had a penchant for dark-haired sex workers, white girls in their 20s or 30s whom he'd found across the Nebraska border in Omaha, but he also may have killed at least two men and one teenager. He worked as a mechanic and tow truck driver, so he picked up women from truck stops and bars, far enough from home not to be noticed. He owned five acres in the middle of nowhere, under cover of trees, where he would lure his victims. He was okay with stabbing and shooting, but what he really liked was smashing their skulls inside the family trailer. He must have believed he was doing important work because he said of one woman, the b deserved it. Lucy said her father would bury his victims in the 90-foot well with their clothes and jewelry. The only thing he kept as a souvenir was their gold teeth. Lucy, who now lives in Florida, grew up to be a self-described cold, detached person. Her brother took his own life at the age of 39, and maybe that's what drives her to keep telling her story. She says she just wants closure for the loved ones of her father's victims, but maybe she wants closure for herself just as much. Lucy says she spent a lifetime telling people who should have listened to her, people like priests and teachers and cops, but they wouldn't trust a child. Her dad would say that she was hallucinating or imagining things. She says that sure, she was a kid, but she remembers everything. She would purposely will herself to try to keep the memories for when she got older. When Lucy was finally able to convince the local county sheriff of her story in October 2022, he said, I believe her 100% that there's bodies in there. Two deputies and two cadaver dogs joined him in the search on the farm, and immediately the dogs went to the spots where Lucy claimed they would find the bodies. Their handler didn't even have to lead them, they just started signaling on their own. The dogs smelled human decomposition in four different locations around the family land. Of course, not everyone trusts the abilities of cadaver dogs 100% in the forensics field, but I liked that their handler said something very reasonable to Newsweek. Today told me there is the odor of human decomposition in the area. More work needs to be done to confirm that. I feel pretty good about what I saw from the dogs, but I'm not going to hang my hat on that. But the county sheriff truly believed they would find bones where the dogs hit. And the Newsweek editor, who originally broke this story, says Lucy is believable to him. Well, this is a woman who has been telling the story consistently for 45 years. Look, before I was a, a, a journalist, I spent a lot of time working undercover um, as an intelligence officer. I know how to do debriefing. And there's little tells that people make when they're telling a lie. I was there when the dogs hit on those sites. She did not direct the dogs. The dogs gravitated toward those sites organically. There was two dogs. They were brought at separate times. I mean, just this is a very consistent story. Um, her motive is not money or fame. 
Uh, you know, and again, as a reporter, we've talked to other people um, that have corroborated bits and pieces of this. And look, I take the standard approach. If you're going to lie about the little things, you can't trust someone about the big things. And so far, we've been able to you know, corroborate quite a few little things. And I, I think the big things stand up to them, to uh, what she's saying. The interesting thing is that Lucy first reported that only, and I say only very relatively, 15 bodies were in the well. And this wasn't the first time the property had been searched. Maybe a decade ago, a local sheriff's deputy had come out to the property to find the well. He couldn't locate it on his own, although maybe that's not surprising considering the land is completely different since Lucy's childhood. A logging operation has bulldozed some of the area, giving it an entirely new look. But when Lucy was able to join officers on this most recent search, she was able to find the well precisely and easily. There was a wet well and a dry well on the land, and Lucy led them straight to the old dry well. A month later, a third cadaver dog hit on the same locations as the previous two dogs. Immediately, families began contacting Lucy as her story broke, sending photos and asking if their sister or mother might have died there on the property. But Lucy's older sister denies all of this, that their father was a serial killer, that there were any bodies, that the kids had to help hide them. She says her sister never mentioned anything about these so-called memories until recently, and that if the dog smelled anything, it was either the remains of their father's stillborn sister who's out there in the ground in a shoebox, or the family dog buried on the land. Of course, I should mention, cadaver dogs are trained to ignore animal remains. Lucy's sister called their dad Donald strict but loving. The only time she remembers him being violent is when a neighbor hit their dog. Of course, she also remembers a time when he placed a board with nails protruding from it on their property to puncture the tires of a group of kids who were trespassing. And Donald may have had connections to organized crime. Now, this is interesting because back in the 1990s, the local FBI office was getting reports of bodies being buried in a nearby well using lie. But back then, it was thought to be the work of organized crime. Now that Newsweek is reporting connections between Donald and organized crime, the rumors have new meaning. Leading up to the excavation of the land last year, investigators added a road to the otherwise uncharted territory in case they needed an easy way to move the many bodies that could possibly be waiting for them. Lucy says she offered to take a polygraph test several times, but when the FBI finally took her up on the offer, she showed up on the scheduled day at the FBI office and the agent meant to administer the test wasn't working. It's not clear if Lucy ever took the test, not that we, the seasoned true crime consumer, necessarily believe in them, but the search of the land commenced either way in December 2022. Witnesses said a piece of heavy machinery was brought in, along with too many vehicles to count, with the intention of digging up both the well and testing another site Lucy had pointed out. The thing is that Lucy wasn't there for the excavation. She was home in Florida. And she says that based on what witnesses were telling her, the right spots weren't being searched. So it may come as no surprise, if you believe Lucy, that nothing was found during the search from Tuesday to Thursday. Witnesses claim that authorities drilled one well, but there are two wells on the property, and this was the wrong one. They also claim that cadaver dogs weren't used despite being on hand. The original cadaver dogs alerted heavily on that well that was never searched. It's unclear why authorities stopped the dig after such a short time and left so much ground untouched. They called the search exhaustive, which seems absurd when we're talking about so much land in so few days. When Lucy reached out to the FBI, she heard nothing in return. So upset by the news, or lack thereof, she threatened to end her life in a private Facebook group dedicated to the alleged murders. No one argues that Donald Studi treated people terribly, even people he was close to. Like, just look at this photo from the gravestone of one of his wives. If this is the best photo of you two together, looking totally dour and standing a foot apart, well. Lucy has two sisters and at least six more half-siblings, and one of Donald's girlfriends was pregnant with a son when Donald tried to run her over with a car. She realizes now that she could have been one of his first victims had a neighbor not come to her rescue. To me, the fact that it doesn't seem unlikely to her that Donald could have been a serial killer is notable. So yes, Donald was a hellion, but could he have really killed as many as 70 women? It all comes down to whether you believe Lucy or the officials who did the search of the property. There's the issue of Lucy having changed her story, although it seems like it's only the body count that changed. But to be fair, it changed by a lot from five to 15 bodies when she first reported her dad to 50 to 70 bodies by the time her story got attention. Lucy's sister said she only started telling the story in 2007 when their dad accused Lucy of stealing $16,000 from him and she tried to get back at him by calling him a serial killer. 
In a blow to her credibility, Lucy claimed innocence at the time, but now admits that she did steal the money to upset her dad. There's also the fact that Lucy threatened to end her life on Facebook, which has people thinking she may just be mentally unwell. On the other hand, it's interesting that rumors about Donald were well known around town. When a local deputy got the call from Lucy a year ago, she didn't sound crazy to him. It was like, right, of course, that guy. And maybe the most interesting tidbit in all of this, what do we think about the fact that two of Donald's wives supposedly died by their own hands? One supposedly strangled herself with an electrical cord and one shot herself in the head. That's a little suspicious, right? Or if they really did take their own lives, was it because they couldn't deal with being complicit in Donald's evil? Lucy says she hasn't made a dime off her allegations and never will. She says it would be blood money. She just wants to do what's right and bring justice and closure to the families. She remembers being a little girl and walking in on her sleeping father one night armed with a gun. She said she didn't have it in her at the time to kill him, the way he laid there so peacefully, but she thinks now about how many lives she could have saved then. Donald Dean Studi died of heart failure in March 2013 at the age of 75. Lucy says she'll press on with or without the help of authorities to bring closure to herself and to the missing people's loved ones. Lucy's sister, on the other hand, just wants to clear her father's name. So I'd love to know your thoughts on this case, from the quote-unquote exhaustive two-day search to the multiple deceased wives to the total lack of bodies thus far. Let me know in the comments. Thank you for tuning into my YouTube video. I'm just a true crime fan like you are, and I really appreciate you taking a chance on me. Please like this video and subscribe to my channel if you liked spending this time together. I'd be so appreciative. Until next time, I'm Katie, and this has been Katie Does Crime.